either manually view the shell and then update your VMware configuration by redirecting the working directory or via the working directory icon or option using the browse icon within the VMware setting. Power, power controls, green is power on, red is power off for this particular host. Whether or not you want to take snapshots, the permissions of the virtual machine, the startup and shutdown, whether or not the virtual machine should be started whenever the system starts. We can go ahead and set that now, power it on. So let's say we reboot the host system. So long as this is set, the on host startup is set to power on, then the virtual guests will be started. And conversely, on host shutdown, we should indicate, which is the default, to power off the virtual machine, or you can shut it down, either or. Power off just shuts it off, just like shutdown would. And there are some advanced options. Disable acceleration, run with debugging information, which impedes performance negatively. Disable memory page trimming and other settings to help you in the event that you're troubleshooting poor performance. So let's click on OK and we've got our settings. And now we're ready to power on the virtual machine and proceed with installation. The CD-ROM drive is tied to the host system CD-ROM drive, which ultimately leads to the DevTree HDA, which is the first ATAPI connection. The configuration file for this host is located beneath VMware 1 Virtual Machines RH5 Instance 1, and it's named rh5instance1.vmx, so this is the config file. Let's power it on, and you'll see that it starts just like a PC. Instead of Dell or Phoenix or some other BIOS information, we see VMware. Here's a startup screen. We can interact with the boot menu. For example, we mentioned that there are multiple options. If you press F2, it takes you into the options submenu where you can interact with it. And by the way, to enable your keyboard within this interface, just click on the screen, anywhere in the screen, which will cause the keystrokes to be transmitted to the virtual machine. Here's some installer options. If you want to disable hardware probing in the event that you are unable to install the head enterprise Linux because there's some sort of obscure hardware problem or obscure hardware causing installation to fail, you type Linux space no probe. If you'd like to test the media, Linux space media check, although we're prompted momentarily to check the media anyway. To enable rescue mode, you can type Linux space rescue or press F5. If you have a driver disk, let's say again you have obscure or not widely supported hardware, but you do have a Linux driver disk, perhaps you've downloaded from the manufacturer. By typing Linux space DD, the Red Hat installer will prompt you at some point for the disk so that it can read the additional drivers. To prompt for the use of other installation metho methods, for example, such as from the network, you can type Linux ask method. So again, this will prompt you. So for example, if you boot from a CD but want to reference, let's say from CD number one of five, but want to reference the media on the wire, perhaps you have it served by an Apache or IIS web server, you can boot from the first of five CDs, but type Linux space ask method and then interact and proceed with a network based install. That way you're not prompted to insert the distinct disks. If you have an installer update disk, something provided by Red Hat, then you type Linux space updates and provide that updated disk. And if you'd like to test the memory, just type in memtest86. To return to the main menu, press escape, and this will return you to the first screen. There are other options, or even F1 that is. There are other options. F3 provides you with some general information, tells you you're now ready to begin. And it tells you if you have problems with a graphical installer, you can set resolution. By default, the graphical installer defaults to 800 by 600, but if it's too big or too small, you can adjust it by indicating Linux space resolution equals, such as 640 by 480, which will cause the, the system to start in 640 by 480. So for example, Linux resolution equals 640 by 480. Since our overall resolution is 800 by 600, 600 by 640 by 480 will fit within our space. Will cause the installation process to proceed at 680 or 640 by 480. Press enter, and this will 
begin the initialization of hardware, which includes the detection of the CPUs, the amount of memory, the attached storage, the setup of an initial RAM disk, and the loading of various modules to support various storage controllers. Again, a lot of what Linux does, regardless of distribution, when it starts initially, is to load drivers that are widely used, such as SCSI or RAID arrays for Dell, HP, and other IBM types of computers and others. We'll skip the media check by pressing tab or left or right arrow keys to get back to the skip section. Press enter. And this will take us forward. Anaconda is being run, and Anaconda will help to detect, or will detect, the connected hardware. It found the video card to be a VMware Inc., so it knows that it's being installed on a VMware Super VGA card, which again is an emulation. And now it'll propel us into the graphical environment. There you see our X pointer followed by a little square pointer beneath it, which is the VMware ultimate pointer, which allows us to interact with the interface. Now, in this case, the installation process has kicked us out. What that means is the graphical support isn't working. So ideally, we should install in text mode. So let's power on and try it again. And it's likely to happen, it happen in your environment as well. So if you find that you're ejected from the installation process, then boot up and execute Linux text. Or navigate to options with F2 and you'll see the options for various settings. But Linux based text will boot us in a text based mode which operates at 720 by 480 or 720 by 400, somewhere in that, that area. So again, our hardware is being detected. We'll be prompted for the media check momentarily, and we should bypass the graphical installer momentarily. Those are some generic drivers, such as a Tappy. We'll skip the media check. Anaconda is being run again, and we should be up shortly in text mode with similar options, just non-graphical mode, of course. And there it sees the VMware Super VGA PCI display adapter. But now we're in text-based mode. So again, if whether or not you're installing a VMware, if for some reason you're ejected or an error is thrown or you're rebooted inadvertently during the installation process, it could be related to the lack of support for your graphics card. And as a result, you may want to type Linux-based text to enter text-based mode. Sometimes you won't know, like in our case, until you try it. Whereas installing Debian on this version of VMware doesn't throw such an error. Now we're just navigating through the options here that we saw earlier. We'll skip entering the installation number. And of course, it tells us that we won't get access to the updates. And we'll tell it we'd like to initialize this drive, so let's go ahead. This will create the default layout later on. And it sees that it's an 8 gig partition. So we'll remove Linux partitions. There are no partitions, so we'll just have it create the default layout. You've cho chosen to remove. Are you sure? Of course we're sure. There's nothing there anyway. Again, the 8 gigs pertain to the space we saw earlier. So review and modify partition layout. If we indicate yes, it tells us what it wants to do. It's going to create a logical volume. Again, for those of you studying for the RHCE, you have to know how to create logical volumes. We'll look at logical volumes later on, as we did with the Debian edition and SUSE Enterprise edition of Linux CBT. But the default partition that's created for general usage for the root file system is based on logical volumes. The swap file system also is a logical volume. However, the boot file system where the kernel is located is not a logical volume. Not, neither is the swap, part, or the swap partition is, but the boot partition is not. So the boot partition is not a logical volume. 
We do have the ability here to create rate partitions. We'll show you how to do that later on as well. We want the Grub bootloader. Electing to not install the Grub bootloader would lead to difficulty booting the system unless we have a boot CD or floppy. Enter OK. And we don't need to sp pass any options to the curl to get this system to start. You can protect your Grub menu by indicating a password which will prompt the user for a password. And this is the entry that will be made into the menu file that Grub uses and presents to the user whenever the system boots. Let's enter the OK. We want to install the boot loader in the master boot record so that it boots again. You'd, you'd not select this option if for some reason you're dual booting or have multiple operating systems and Grub will not be the default bootloader on the system. But since it is the lone operating system, we'll install the bootloader Grub into the master boot record. The small section of the disk, 512 bytes, that the BIOS references immediately after it has passed your configuration of your hardware. It asks if we'd like to configure ETH0. We'll indicate yes. We want it to be activated on boot. It's detected as an AMD, and this is the interface, PCNet32. So we'll indicate, and we, we want IPv4 and IPv6 support. For now, we'll accept DHCP. We'll change it later on, since there is a DHCP server. As far as IPv6 is concerned, we'll leave the configuration as it is so that the Cisco router provides the prefix information. That's what's meant by automatic neighbor discovery. IPv6 systems search for neighbors on their subnet, and usually the router, if configured for IPv6, will provide the prefix information, which will allow the host to self-configure. And here it says if your system's part of a larger network where host names are assigned, by DHCP, then select DHCP. Our host names, on, in this case, are not assigned by DHCP. They could be. In that case, we'd set up a reservation, matching the MAC address of this VMware instance to the host name indicated. But we don't have such a table configured, so we'll name the host Linux CBT serve 3 dot Linux CBT dot internal. And this is the fully qualified domain name. And then OK. And the system clock in this case does not use UTC. So we'll turn it off. The time zone is correct, so we'll enter to, to continue. As you can see, these the settings that we're driving through here, or moving through rather quickly, are identical to what we saw in the GUI base installation moments ago. So we can go through them very quickly. We'll install software development and web server, and we'll elect not to customize the software selection in the interest of saving time. Now, dependencies will be checked to be sure that we have everything we need so that there are no broken packages or broken applications. And once all the dependencies have been met, we'll move on to the next step in the installation. Now, just like when we installed moments ago in graphical mode on the server, the PowerEdge server, using the CDs 1 through 3 of 5, there are multiple consoles or identical consoles available minus the graphical console.